In the previous two videos, we started to explore Scapy. We used Scapy to capture packets or sniff traffic, and we also used it to read PCAP files, to open up files or network traces, and then examine those .pcap packet captures. In this video, we're going to use Scapy to create our own packets from scratch, and we can layer these packets and fill them with any type of settings we want, and then we can send them. It's a pretty powerful tool, and it's probably the coolest part about Scapy. So let's check it out. So what I'm going to do is, to do this, I'm going to need to run Scapy with admin privileges. So I'll use a super user do, sudo, and then run Scapy like that. And I'm also going to need Wireshark. So I've got an extra tab here in my shell, and I'm going to run Wireshark as well with admin privileges. And then we'll, we'll be able to see some of the traffic that's being captured. So here I've got Scapy, and with Scapy you can just create these packets and layer your packets, and it's pretty easy. So in other words, if you want an IP packet, you just type IP, open and close parentheses, and you've got a default IP packet with default settings in the header. Now, if you wanted, let's say, to layer an IP packet with an, the next protocol layer, you would say, okay, I want an IP packet and then you use forward slash to add layers to your packet. So at the next layer I want it to be TCP and so now I have an IP packet. Notice the fragment field is set to zero, the protocol field is set to TCP and then at the next layer we have TCP. So that's pretty cool. So you can also add the Ethernet or the layer 2 um, protocol in there or layer two technology. So this time I'll put ether in front with an open and close parentheses and then IP and then TCP. And if I do that, you can see I've got an ethernet frame. The type field is IPv4 because that's the next layer. The upper layer will be IP. Then you see the next layer is TCP. So it says protocol TCP. And you're basically building your packet the way you want it or your frame the way you want it. Now that's pretty cool. You can also add in raw data. So let's say I'll just do an up arrow here. If I want some raw data, I can do forward slash and then in between double quotes, whatever text I want, like what's up. And now I'll hit enter and you see there is the ethernet frame, the IP layer, the TCP layer, and then a raw layer with text in it. Now, another cool thing that you can do is, is you could basically layer it however you want. You could mangle this and create it in whatever way. So in other words, so we got an ethernet frame, here's an IP layer, and then I'll put another IP layer. So now I have two IP layers, or one encapsulated inside of another. And then a forward slash, and then we'll switch this from TCP, let's say, to UDP and see what that looks like. And by the way, all of these, these steps that I'm doing, I basically picked up by reading the tutorial on the documentation at scapy.net. So, I mean, just go to scapy.net, click on documentation, and you'll find this kind of tutorial right in the docs. Okay, and now if we see here, there's the ethernet frame, the upper layer is IPv4, there's the first IP with the header fields. Notice the protocol says, IP encapsulated. So there's an IP inside of an IP. And the next protocol, UDP, and then raw data. So you're literally crafting this however you want it. And then you can also specify the types of data that you want inside these layers. So for instance, and they this is also listed in the documentation, you could say I want an IP uh, packet, but I don't want the upper layer protocol um, to be, let's say, uh, uh, TCP, I want the upper layer protocol to be protocol equals, we'll say, 55. And then we'll say forward slash TCP, open and close parentheses. And if I do that, you can see that it loads that protocol, let's say protocol 55, right there in the header field. All right, so let's start actually creating a packet and sending a packet. We'll practice doing that. So I'll type clear and I'll say, this time I'll use a variable. So I'll load my packet in a variable. So PCK equals, and then 
an IP packet. Okay, and then what I'll do is, now I've got that, that uh, packet, let's just make sure, type PCK and hit enter, and you see an empty IP packet. So now I can put settings right into my packet, like pck.dst for destination equals, and then between double quotes, 127.0.0.1, my loopback address. So now, if I say pck, it shows me I've got an IP packet, and the destination IP address is my loopback address. So now, what I could do is, is I could send this, but before I send it, I'll go over here to Wireshark and I'll start capturing on my loopback interface. So there's my loopback interface. And then to send this, all I do is hit send and then PCK in between the parentheses and I just sent the packet. Now, if we go over here to Wireshark, you can see there's the packet from localhost. It's hard to see here, but from localhost to localhost, an IPv4 protocol um, and that's it. It's not actually a ping. I didn't ping 127.0.0.1. I just sent a packet from 127.0.0.1 to 127.0.0.1, and it's an IPv4 protocol. And that's it. And you can see here, uh, it's basically an Ethernet frame and the IP. It's just got the two layers, and that's it. Now, let's see if we can improve on that. So if we wanted to make it a ping, all I have to do is say, okay, send PCK just like I did before, but then I could put forward slash ICMP and add a layer to it. So I'll add ICMP and then forward slash, then I'll add some raw data like what's up. Okay, so there goes a string right there. And now I've got send PCK and then layer on an ICMP layer and then a raw data layer. And now if I do it, you can see it sends another packet. Now if we look over here at Wireshark, notice another packet was captured or seen, this time also from localhost to localhost, but the protocol now is ICMP. And you can see it added that ICMP layer into the packet. And if we look in the binary data window down here, you can see there's the text, was up right there in the text. So that's pretty cool. Now, that's about it. The other thing we could do is we could load, instead of sending it directly like this, another thing that you can do is you could say, I'm gonna say another variable like P equals, and then, well, and then send packet. So this time, I'm gonna send that same packet. However, I've loaded it into a variable P. And now, when I send it, it got sent, I can actually say, show me P, and you can see that it, uh, it lists basically what P is. It was one ICMP packet. And if I do p.show, show me some more information about it. And you can see that it just gives you a, a little more, in this case, a little more detail. Now this is a sent packet, not really a returned packet. Notice here that it was, th we've got three sent packets here, but really no returns. So. If we want to see a return, we can continue to do uh, add on some new capabilities here. So let's take a look at that. Before we do that, I'm going to say this time, let's do something else. We'll say P equals and then send packet. So this is, we can also do a send P. And then this time what I'll do is I'll say we're going to send an Ethernet frame. So layer two. And then on top of it, we'll add a string. Once again, I picked this up just from the documentation. This is Ethernet. And then we can specify, so an Ethernet frame, on top of that Ethernet frame, some raw data string text, and then specify the interface. So iFace equals, and my Linux Mint virtual machine here, the interface is ENP0S3. So that's that. And then I want to maybe have the return packet. So return packet equals true. Okay, something like that. And we'll, we'll send that. And it looks like I've got an error in here. Let's see here. MP03. Ah, it's return packets. 
when you get an error message like this, it means, yeah, there's an unexpected keyword argument, return packet. That's incorrect. So I'll do an up arrow and I'll turn that into return packets and hit it again. And you can see it says MAC address to reach destination not found. In other words, we sent an Ethernet frame, but we didn't specify the MAC address, so it used a broadcast MAC address and it sent one packet. If we go here to our Wireshark capture, we should see some data about that. I'm not seeing it here. Ah, I know why. I probably was not sent to um, loopback. So what I'll do is I'll stop that capture and this time I'll go to capture options and I'll capture on ENP 0s3 because that's the that is actually the interface that we specified not loopback. So ENP 0s3 will start the capture continue without saving so now I'm capturing and then let's resend that up arrow and sent one packet and there it is. So from this MAC address to um, a broadcast, and now it's picking up traffic from all over, but so I'll stop the capture. I wanna see exactly what, from my local to broadcast protocol, it says here, loop, no valid function found. So that's kind of an odd packet, right? The protocol loop, no valid function found, pretty interesting. And then you could see here it followed up with, um, you know, you could see the rest of the traffic being captured here on the mints, capturing all the traffic that you're seeing on my network there. But anyway, pretty interesting to see this broadcast. And it's even got the data in here. Notice it says here, this is Ethernet. You can see it actually picked up the text, but it was sent broadcast. So that worked. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's do some more. So another one that you could do, I'll type clear here, is you could, this time we're gonna say P equals send, no, no, P equals SR1. That means send and receive one packet. So we'll do basically a send receive one function. And inside of it, we'll put in um, an IP layer and we'll put in an ICMP layer and we'll put in some text. And I'll just put in my name. All right, there we go. So, and the IP layer, I'm gonna put in the destination Let's see here. So destination DST equals, and then my router, my gateway. So my router on this network is 192.168.8.1. So P equals send and receive one packet, an IP packet to this destination, my gateway. It's gonna be an ICMP ping, and then it's also adding in this text string. So that looks pretty good. Let's, let's give that a try. So I'll hit enter. Begin emission, finished sending a packet, received two packets, got one answer, remaining packets zero. Now I'm not using Wireshark for this to see what happened. I can see it right here. Um, so if we want to examine it, type P and hit enter, put in the variable, which we just sent this under, and you can see here, it basically shows me the returned response. So this time, when if I type P, I get quite a bit of information here. But you can see the source was 8.1, my gateway, the destination, my virtual machine here, my Linux virtual machine, Linux Mint, and you can see the type, it was an echo reply, code zero. So it's a, uh, the message type, the ICMP message type is echo reply and with the code zero. And then you can see there's the raw data. There's Dan. So that's pretty cool. Now. We can all, not only do that, we can also run a p dot, put the variable, and run the show method or the show function, show command. And then it just shows you that data in kind of a, a stepped version so that it's, 
it's just a different way to display it really, but it's the same exact data. Okay, we're gonna do more crafting of packets, but since the video's starting to get a little bit long, we'll do that in the next video.